Welcome to the University of Manchester's Economists Talking About series. Today we are interviewing Dr. Isopi, a lecturer with the Department of Economics at the University of Manchester. Um, to start with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do? So um, I'm a senior lecturer in economics at the moment, and I'm also serving as an undergrad director, which means that I try to coordinate a little bit the uh, teaching that gets done uh, at the undergraduate uh, for the economics department, um, mainly, um, you know, listening to both the students and colleagues' needs and try to um, improve in whatever feedback the students uh, have been provided us with um, every semester. Cool. Um, could you describe your career progression and how you ended up um, in your current position? Sure. So um, I'm not English. Uh, and so I started my um, postgrad education in Italy. Uh, at the time, I was very passionate for uh, um, development economics, and I realized I wanted to study more, um, specifically why some countries grow more compared to others, um, and so on, why it's so hard to eradicate poverty uh, from some uh, specific countries, say, in Africa. Um, so I, I didn't really want to become an academic at the time, but I knew that I had to invest more um, in education. So I, um, I worked, uh, so I decided to start um, a PhD um, program, to enroll in a PhD program, um, because I, I realized that, that actually that was a kind of decision I could have postponed for a, um, a little bit more. And so I, so only when I finished the um, my PhD, um, I had the opportunity to work uh, as a professional in the place that I really, really wanted at the time, which is the work bank in Washington DC. Um, and then uh, I stayed there for a year, and um, and then eventually to kind of combine a little bit more personal life and also career. I decided to uh, move back to the UK after that. And I did uh, um, a postdoc at the uh, University of Nottingham for three years, where I had the opportunity to combine my interest for development economics and experimental economics as well. Um, after that, you know, once my um, postdoc was finished, I started to apply for jobs. And, uh, and this is how I ended up at the University of Manchester with, uh, for me, combine the uh, possibility to have uh, a large department, first of all, uh, very strong in all the areas that I was interested in, uh, but also having um, nearby and actually uh, only in a different floor, uh, the Global Development Institute, which focuses more on uh, development and in particular development studies. Um, on a related note, how do you feel your day to day routine is varied as your roles are varied, like between working at the World Bank and being a lecturer at university? So, um, so first of all, there is no uh, teaching when you work um, as a professional involved. So I was uh, um, just out of my training in some sense. I was helping with the uh, realization of the Global Development Report. Um, so I was still working in the uh, research department of the World Bank. So it will still be uh, very much research related, my job. But the main difference is that the areas of my research will not be chosen by myself. Uh, so I will be working on tasks that, for example, my current boss or my line manager would say uh, that I should be focusing on. At the time was age effectiveness, which is something that I uh, was actually working. I work for my PhD, so it suits me very well in that sense. But the and, and I had, I must say, to a certain extent, freedom in choosing the line of research, uh, um, but still within uh, I would say certain areas, okay? Whereas at the university, um, beside the teaching, that is um, in some sense where you have less freedom to a certain extent because it very much depends on your interest, but also what the department needs. So it 
there's a match that has to be done. I've been very lucky so far, I must say, but sometimes it might be that some colleagues are on sabbatical, so you need to cover for a specific module. And so you have to go around and ask colleagues to do. And, you know, especially when I was younger, that would be also something that I could volunteer to do. Um, but other than that, the freedom that you get in terms of research is basically complete. And so I've been working on uh, development economics issues, but also on other issues that, you know, I just happened to be interested in to, or, uh, you know, some colleagues wanted to work with me on. So um, there's a there's a much more, um, so the, the interest range that you can cover when you are at uni is basically uh, limitless. Whereas whenever you're working for an institution, despite the freedom, all the freedom that you might have, if it's very much within certain boundaries because in the end you will have to produce um, a piece of research, um, which can go in, in a report or it might be a discussion paper. So in some sense is more targeted toward a specific need. Um, whereas a uni don't really get that. That makes sense. Um, do you feel that your previous roles have impacted your teaching style um, at all? And if so, how? <clears throat> yes, I mean, I usually say that um, poverty is not a variable that you can just measure like, um, I don't know, uh, a monetary base or interest. It's not something that you can just um, read on books. So I try to, um, so first of all, I, I did some field work and this, it's um, whatever I saw or uh, the condition I had to, I interacted with, with people in the developing country. I make sure that when I teach, I explain that very carefully to students because we might not realize things which are, uh, or things that we uh, take or give for granted um, in developed countries are not exactly the same in developing ones. So um, there's a there's a whole range of preference that actually does change, um, and this is something that I uh, you know I usually tend to focus my teaching on and remind my students of. The other thing that I try to do uh, almost every year is to bring in professionals to give uh, like a guest lecture because I believe that the students need to also see um, where all the things I learn um, get used to. Uh, so where I can make a use of them, where I can um, actually see these tools in action. So um, I try always to invite, I don't know, people from the Overseas Development Institute in London, for example, ODI, or other people that run consultancy base in um, developing countries to come give a talk and explain, you know, their point of view. Um, and also in some sense to, um, to make realize to students the application of what we do. Um, and since you have taught both undergraduate and postgraduate students, could you describe what the transition from undergraduate to master's is like and what students currently going through this transition or who are going to should know about it? So um, what I do like about teaching to master's students, for example, a postgrad um, students is the, um, is what I can learn from them all the time. Um, so the um, relationship in, in some sense is much more both ways rather than uh, one way. Um, I had students a um, couple of years ago, much older than I am, which have been working as professional for many years. And so they now were kind of retraining to do something else. And so I think it was great to hear from them. Uh, their experience, um, their day-to-day -day life and, and where um, and in what kind of aspects they would see some things that I was teaching. So hear from them. Yes, that's right, because it happened to me that I used that in my previous job or whatever. I think that that brings in um, a much wider perspective. 
And as I said before, it makes the learning really going uh, both ways, whereas with undergrads, that is much lesser. Um, so I, I, in that sense, I really like teaching uh, postgrad for that reason. Also, the motivation, you know, these are students that most of the time come from straight undergrads, but, you know, there's also a good bunch that have been doing all sorts of things. So when they decide to get back to education, there's a lot, there's a big motivation because they know what the job market is like. And so they're doing really an investment in education. And then they want to take and make the most of the experience they do as a um, as a postgrad, which sometimes I have the impression that undergrads do not realize there and then. Um, and I know because I had students you know, maybe coming back after two, three years, I say, oh, I remember when we were doing that. I didn't appreciate it back then. And and now I really regret it. And I was like, yeah, that's right. Because as a student, you know, you just focus on your exams and what's in there at the moment. But sometimes, and also because we don't, uh, it's also our fault in some sense. We fail to make you see like the big picture um whereas once you have seen that after maybe two three years um you go back to education uh which much stronger independence but also uh, motivation and on a similar note my final question is what advice do you have for undergraduate students who are maybe thinking about academia and what should they be doing to um, further that interest and engage with their course. I actually feel very lucky to do this job. It's the um, I haven't realized that when I was your age or when I was younger that that probably would have been the job that I always should have uh, would have wanted to do. Um, I think it's uh, it's uh, great in terms of um the knowledge that you kind of come across the kind of people that you can meet all the time um it's just amazing there's a there's a you must have definitely a big motivation behind um because the time that you spend on books is a lot and it sometimes never ends um, and this was the only thing that I knew when I finished my undergrad in some sense. And people were asking me, what would you like to do next? And I was replying, but I like studying. You know, that's that's what I like to do. Um, and so I didn't know that there was actually a job for that in where you kind of keep studying for the rest of your life. So if you have that motivation, that curiosity uh, that passion um you have to it's something that you definitely are ready to uh, explore um the downside i would say or the um not so good side it's the fact that you are in some sense in charge of your own time for for research for example um, and so sometimes having somebody that tells you exactly what to do is great because you don't have to think about it. You just have to do it. Sometimes being your own boss might be um, might give you a lot of freedom that sometimes you don't want to. And you just would like to do what somebody told you to do. So a lot of freedom sometimes can have can feel daunting. And it's like, OK, but what's next? What What can I do now? Uh, and it would just like somebody say, no, no, you have to just do this, this and that. Oh, great. Thank you so much. It, you know, it, might, it can be uh, not rewarding um, on the short run. It could be very rewarding on the long run. But on the short run, you might kind of feel that you're doing many things and you do not see uh, where all of them are end up going. Um, thank you so much for doing this interview. Um... You're very welcome, Kavya. <laughs> If you um, like this interview, remember to come back next time for the next one in our series.